This is how to make a supernova and today we're going to make the LAAT from Star Wars and a landing pad with LEDs. Back in 2002 when I was still a young boy I went to the cinemas to see Attack of the Clones. And I still remember this very cool moment when the LAAT first showed up flying into the Geonosian Arena. Look! It's a troop transport. It's a heavy transport. It has loads of weapons. It has massive firepower. It can fly into atmosphere. It can fly into space. So this truly is my favorite Star Wars vehicle. Sorry, at, -AT. And of course, this cool ship from Star Wars needs a very cool landing pad. So we are going to start with this piece of foam. It's 25 by 40 centimeters right now. And this is going to be the landing deck. In the end, it's going to be around uh, 8 centimeters high. So your miniatures will have enough space to take cover and to stay out line of sight. But it's still low enough that your miniatures can do a climb or a jump action. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is to add some details on this landing pad because now uh, nothing is attached and it is a nice flat piece and the chance that we break something else is much lower. So I'm going to draw on the general shape and I want some bigger plates here. So the idea is that in the center of the landing zone there will be some kind of uh, plates that are stronger to support all the weight from the ships that are landing here. Around that I want to make some kind of um, vents. Or maybe it's a drainage system so there isn't any water uh, on the landing deck when it's raining. And the rest of the area will be uh, panels. I'm not sure how it's going to look but something uh, like this I guess. And then all around the landing pad. With my hot wire foam cutter, I already made one mil uh, foam sheets for all the details. But when you don't have a hot wire foam cutter, no problem. With your hobby knife, you can cut out all the details and then with a pen or a pencil, you can widen all your cuts a bit so you get the same effect. But when you have a hot wire foam cutter and you want to put in a little bit more effort, this is going to look amazing. To make our vents I'm going to use a coffee stir and then push it in the foam like this. So we have this very small vent. Now I'm going to move a mill or two and do the same thing until this whole strip is done. Before we can make the rest of our landing pad, this first needs to dry, so we're going to work on the structure underneath it. To make it, I'm going to use a lot of foam blocks and they later will be angled uh, like this. And I got this idea from the trailer from Star Wars Outlaws. So right now I'm going to cut a lot more blocks and do some paneling with a knife and a pencil. I made a few of these six centimeters foam blocks and I'm going to glue them in all the corners. So when you have any models on the landing pad, they have some cover, but they're just rectangles right now. So I'm going to cut the corners to make them look more interesting.
not only do these vertical lines add some detail to our ramps, but they also give our models the ability to stand on it without falling or sliding off. For this project, I designed and printed eight of these lampposts, and they're actually very easy to use. I already made a hole here with a wooden dowel, and now I can very easily slide in the lamppost, and you are done. The tube on the back is long enough so that you can also angle uh, your foam, and your tube will still poke through. The hole for the cable is very small, but that's not a problem for my 0.2 uh, electrical cable I use. This looks like a normal copper wire, but it's actually a very thin cable with a very thin uh, protective coating. So uh, when you're going to use this, thick cables are going to be a little problem. But I will put a link to this SDL file in the video description, and it's totally free, a gift from me to you, and I really hope you can use it in your projects. With the wooden skewer, I made some holes in the foam so I could slide in my lamppost on the right spot. The wooden skewer is slightly thinner than the tubes from the lamppost, so positioning them on exactly the right place was very easy. And then I took a large brush with some grey paint and I dabbed the brush on the landing deck to get this cloudy, patchy effect. And I made sure some of the black paint was still showing through. Then I came back with a lighter grey paint and repeated the whole process. This time I had less paint on my brush so I can still see the previous layer. Installing the red LEDs was very easy and I didn't need any glue to keep them in place. And when I made sure all the paint was dry I gave everything a dark brown wash and wiped most of it away with some paper towels. Finally, I used my light grey again from the second layer to give the whole thing some light dry brushing. My friends, I hope you like this video so far and if you do, please like and subscribe because I have a lot more cool projects I want to share with you. Thanks. For the LAAT, I bought this model from Dark Fire Designs. This is the old STL file and they have updated it so it's easier to print, assemble and you have some posing options. If you want to know more, the link is in the video description. I'm going to start without my airbrush to show you you can paint this whole thing with the brushes you already have at home right now. I'm using a maker brush and some light grey paint to give everything an overbrush. It's like dry brushing but with way more paint. And you keep repeating this process until you have a very nice coverage on your whole model. For the next layer of white paint I'm using my airbrush because it's a bit faster. When you don't have an airbrush you can do this with a normal dry brush but make sure you are focusing on the middle parts of all the petals. When the paint was dry I added some very dark brown washes. With some paper towels I wiped most of it away. And then I took a small sponge and some white paint and I dabbed it on all the edges of the colored parts to simulate some chip paint and scratches.
and I don't know how but I lost all the footage from the edge highlighting. In this footage you can clearly see all the pure white lines around the panels. I used my smallest brush for this step and I also added some highlighting on the red and the green parts with some light green and light red paint. I also printed the glass cockpits but they're not clear and a little bit yellow so I'm not going to use them for my project. And for the lighting inside the cargo bay of the LA-80, I'm using this warm white 3 volt LED filament. All the switches I have are way too large for this model, so the battery holder is going to be my switch. My friends, thank you for watching. And if you want to see more Star Wars builds, I suggest you watch this video where I build this massive bar from Star Wars Outlaws. Or maybe this one is more interesting for you. See you next time.